we often are looked over as flyover territory. I mean, it's the East Coast, it's the West Coast. We kind of forget about everything in the middle. And we often forget completely about the Great Lakes. Together, the Great Lakes hold about 20% of all the fresh water on Earth. And the people here live by the water, drink the water, swim, and eat the fish from it. It really is essentially a northern coastline, only it's fresh water, not salt water. The economic viability of this region uh, depends on the, the coal, the taconite, the salt, the many commodities that come out of Lake Superior and other ports. People that live up here realize and understand that there is something called winter. And winter brings snow and an awful lot of ice. And we really need to be able to get out and enjoy it, to embrace it, and largely people do. When we had analog TV, I could watch the Lions game while I was out ice fishing. Now without analog, we can't bring the TV and battery out there. So it's a, a hardship on us now. The weather, like I say, we're always at the mercy of it, you know, and the weather these last couple winters we've had have been fairly poor winters. If ice loss on the Great Lakes were to continue, soon we would have no winter ice at all. Losing all the ice of the Great Lakes, it would be a major system change in this part of North America. This ice really worries us. You know, this is a resource that somebody better pay attention pretty soon and try saving because it's not going to be here. You know? When you're standing on the shores here of Lake Superior and it's the middle of February and you look out on the lake and all you see is ice for as far as, as, as the horizon and you truly realize that you are looking at the largest freshwater lake in the world that for all you know is frozen solid through and through.